Well, I've been meaning to get round to review this for nearly a year now, but finally um, I've, I've got it on my desk. Let's have a look at it. It's First Impressions Day and we're looking at the Armstrong Whitworth FK8 from Copper State Models. Welcome to Model Kit Stuff, where you'll find all of this. Model kit stuff. Welcome to First Impressions Day. Uh, and yes, Copper State models. Um, this is the second one of their aircraft we have reviewed. Um, this is 1 to 48 scale. Uh, kit number is CSM 1030. Um, and it's the Armstrong Whitworth FK8 mid production version, uh, which is a, a First World War or Great War um, uh, aircraft. Now, I don't know much about the aircraft per se, um, but what what made me buy it was that. How unusual. I have no idea what it is. Let's get you a bit closer. Um, so I don't know whether that is um, ammunition feed, fuel feed, um, some form of strange radiator. I have no idea. Um, but it certainly looks different, and I like the quirky, and that's what drew me in. So... Nice bit of artwork um, on the front of the um, aircraft. Looks like there's a second one there, and then we've got a German uh, aircraft in trouble in the background. Um, as we look at the side of the box, um, we've got two paint options by the looks of it. Um, number two squadron, um, Royal Flying Corps, second lieutenant, Alan A. McLeod, uh, won the Victoria Cross flying this aeroplane on the 27th of March 1918 so there we go um, and then this second one here um, which I think is the one depicted on the front yes it is is Armstrong Whitworth FK8 C3549 number 35 squadron Royal Flying Corps December 17 so if you want a victoria cross one you've got one so that's interesting um side of the boxes pretty much tells you same as what's on the top um and then on this side um it tells us that we've got a multimedia kit in there and contact details and for people above the age of 14 which suggests that we must have photo etch inside so when we take the uh box top off is a bit tight we find that that's just um, a display cover and then we've got um, as is copper state models way we have this really strong corrugated box top opening box which you can use for your build which has this label on top um, you know I, I would be happy receiving it like that without the um, without the pictures on top but I think this is uh, uh, you know with the the little technical drawing gives you a feel that you're about to go into um, uh, an experience and not just bash together a model. So, when we open the box, we have uh, decals in a Ziploc bag um, with some acetate in there as well. Um, we have our instruction book. We have heat sealed bag with a couple of sprues in another smaller one with a small sprue separate sprues in separate bags and then at the bottom we've got all sorts of goodies here so what we got ziplock bag with two lots of photo etching another ziplock bag again with two lots of the same photo etching that's interesting um, we've got some copper photo etch well there's a lot of photo etch isn't there um, what's that more decals and another two bags again looking like I identical photo etch how strange 
I think they've duplicated their by accident, but they seem to have done that all the way through. How strange. And whether, unless they've given you two bites at the cherry, but that would be unusual, but what a lot of photo etch. Okay, let's have a look at the instructions. Right, our instruction manual is, um, it's not A4, it's a bit narrower than A4, so I think it must be a bespoke size. Um, it's very colourful and glossy, certainly on the front, it's stapled. Um, and on the front we get the box artwork again, really nicely presented, we get some history. Um, so yeah, um, tells us um, all sorts of information, like the nickname of the aircraft, which was the Big Ack. Um, and then at the bottom we've got website and contact details and tells us that the kit is 2017. When we open up, we continue with the glossy page, which um, is not as easy on the eye as if it was matte. I prefer matte personally, um, but um, not as much a problem as, as it could be. Right, so we've got our little um, parts map here. Um, and it's telling us we've got um, a sprue A, a sprue B and two sprue C's which we, we certainly saw. Um, we've got two lots of decals which we saw. Um, we've got resin engine parts, okay, which I'm not sure that I did see. Um, a metal exhaust okay and then photo etch um, for A, B and then another photo etch for A that's a little um, that's a little concerning isn't it that we've got <laughs> how we're going to understand that as we go through the instructions and maybe they put different numbers on um, but it's not saying times two so I think we've definitely got duplications in there um, acetate uh, windscreens then we've got our symbols uh, for the um, instructions, the key for the instructions, and then we've got our colours, which are just listed with a, a number and a name, no paint brand, which is interesting. So you can choose your own shades and stuff from that, depending on, on your like. So I don't particularly have an issue with that, but there you go. Um, these days, people seem to like to have a long list of brands, but yeah um they often they list paints which are all different shades anyway so you know go with what you think right um one cockpit um so we're starting with what looks like the control stick to me um and then so that will be some base structure building up the base structure i like the fact that we've got different colors for the parts that you're adding so we put that one in then we're putting that one in. Very similar to how Airfix do it, though Airfix show you after the event what you've just fitted, slightly different approach. That looks like the pedal sections there, building up the uh, uh, bulkhead, which mounts the uh, machine gun and ammunition case. And that looks like that is built up down this side. So you do need to study your instructions first because We've got the gun there with some um, etch ammunition, is it? Or maybe you're just painting it, maybe it's it's on there. Um, yeah, I think that must be moulded in because it's clearly saying photo etch there. Now, what am I saying? Photo etch, right, okay. So those are the parts you're adding and then you're going up to paint it. So the sequence is a bit bit odd isn't it they're showing get you painted then they're showing how to assemble it that's a bit odd uh, then you're adding it into the bulkhead then you're adding this photo etched ammunition box so already I'm saying this is a fairly advanced kit um, step two fuselage and cockpit so we've got some holes to drill more photo etch going in some plastic parts um, I don't see that we've got paint instructions here particularly at this stage um, 
but it is telling us what's photo etch and um, it, with every time there's photo etch it's also telling us to use CA glue. Um, then we're building up um, an ammunition rack which is interesting and the um, seat there again no painting instructions for any of this at this stage um, then carrying on with step two all those little items we've built up are being installed and then we've got our paint instructions so a bit like wing nut wings they give you the paint instructions after you've built it so you have to cross reference um, so yeah um, and what's it telling us there so 12 uh, dark wood 10 clear doped linen um, 3 semi gloss black um, it doesn't give you um, a colour for that particularly um, the stool um, but I'm guessing that would be leather um, and again it's not really giving you colours for the seat either um, so there's paint instructions for some but not all um, then we're building up some more photo etch parts um, telling us where to put our rigging line but it's not telling us where it terminates but maybe it's out of sight don't know um, and you don't need to terminate it not sure um, but the fuselage has gone together so still in step two fuselage and cockpit um, so plastic details going in sometimes faced up with photo etch um, very very clear where everything's going because of the colors I like it quite a bit um, then we've got a photo etch frame with acetate going in as the windscreen um, that will be interesting to build up um, yeah you've got to think about how you're going to paint that you're going to paint the fo photo etch then fold it and hope that nothing happens I mean probably any breakage in the paint would be on the glue line don't know um, but you see it being mounted there and we can see why there's a hole in it there because we've got this whatever that is going through um, building up all our dials and switches and stuff there um, base plastic part with uh, photo etch on um, it says only apply after applying decals uh, which makes sense you can see it installed and you can see it in its, all its glory painted up there. Quite a busy um, uh, board there with all the dials on. Uh, that'll look really nice, should be very visible. Um, then we're on step three, the fuselage. Um, so again, we're building up something which is photo etched faced and that goes in the side there. So it must be some form of cabling going on that at some point looks like something that moves doesn't it um, more photo etch going in this has got a lot of etch on it then we've got a tail plane then we've got um, the little um, connection points for all the uh, different cables control cables going in turning over and we're on what are we step four lower wing and rudder okay so you can see them attached there so they must be simply just plastic parts that connect in um, then we've got um, all sorts of photo etch connection points for your rigging eight of them in total all slightly different uh, different orientations but you can see you've got all the holes in there for your connection points so you're going to have to bond that really carefully um, and at this point consider what you want to rig with but that's going to make rigging really easy um, especially if you're using something like um, um, a, a nylon line a stretchy line because um, you can thread it through um, pull it taut glue it in position really nice and easy so should be actually easy to rig this aircraft right struts and top wing step five um, more photo etch um, anchor points going in then we're putting the struts in uh, which are going into these holes here which will help hold those into place so that's really lovely engineering and then we're doing the top wing and the anchor points again and then the top wing goes on top let's hope it's as easy as it looks there um, 
because lining up struts is always a little bit of a pain in the bum. Right, okay. Then we are on uh, our next step. What are we on? Um, step six, aren't we? Engine. Um, so we seem to have a plastic one and a resin one, and you can go with whichever you want. Well, no doubt the resin one's got more detail, um, but might also be a bit um, harder to clean up and prepare. Um, but you can add more detail because you can see with the plastic one, we're adding the manifold in step two, but um, with the resin one we're using wire to make push rods so it's very much simplified uh, more experienced um, then we're removing some um, parts must be a different engine variation um, on the plastic one we've got the little um, uh, rockers molded in on the resin one we're we're adding them as photo etch, so that should look really cool. You know what, you have a go at building that, and if it don't work out, use the plastic one. S simple as that. And then at the bottom, we've got all our paint instructions, really colorful engine. Be nice to have that on display if we can. Um, then we are on our next step, engine compartment. Um, first thing they're showing you is the rigging, and you can see how it's going from some of these rigging points which is really nice. Then we've got loads of photo etch going in, um, showing you alignment pictures, which is handy. And then we're putting the engine in. Then undercarriage and other. Okay. So uh, we're building up this thing that goes on the top. I have no idea what it is. If anyone can tell me what that is, I would love to know. Um, but it looks like an ex some form of exhaust silencer or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I, my gut feel is it's taking exhaust fumes away, but the shape of it looks a bit odd. So um, I don't know. I suppose it's an attempt at aerodynamics, maybe. Um, so we're adding some photo etch side pieces here, panels, so you could leave some of those off so you could see the engine on one side maybe maybe um, we've got the wheels being painted up um, we've got the um, framework for mounting the wheels going in um, and then we've got the wheels going on and a rigging diagram again nice and clear all in red um, then we're doing cowling radiators and exhausts so uh, metal exhaust for premium set okay i don't know whether i've got a premium set or not so i might not have that um and then uh more photo etch so all the cowling that's going around the engine that would have been metal parts on the aircraft is photo etch so you can certainly leave bits off and see all the rigging and see the beautiful engine and that would look fairly cool um then we've got this bit being assembled so it's not it's whatever it is it's not an exhaust because that's the exhaust there so whatever that is still don't know um photo etch cowling so forming that will be interesting getting the shape right on those curves um yeah obviously it's got to form to the side so you've got a guide not easy not easy. What would be easy is to leave it all off and show the engine, um, which I'm, I'm sort of tempted to do, but I'd like to have the cowling and bit laying next to it, which means then I'm going to have to put it on a base. So um, you're sort of dictating what you do, isn't it? Um, then we've got, um, this is the landing skid for the tail there. Um, we're building... Oh, another clear bit of acetate. So there's a vision port that go in the bottom there, which goes in a photo etch frame. Then we're building up the mount for the machine gun. Um, so you can see with photo etch ratchets going on the side. Again, paint instructions um, and showing you it mounted. Bombs and propeller. So um, we've got mounting points for the ordnance, a little rack being built up. Um, uh, th that goes on the strut and I think it's like your, your pit art tells you your wind speed and stuff I think that's what that is 
and they all seem to to have it um, and then uh, we've got our propeller which single, seems to be a single piece with a photo etch um, bolt ring on the front which uh, means that you can paint that separately um, so that'll be pretty cool that must be the end of the build yes it is so I couldn't tell you how many actual steps there is in there because there's lots of sub assemblies but a busy old instructions and what a lot of photo etch tons of it right then we have our rigging diagram that's putting some people off straight away isn't it <laughs> I mean what I would say is you don't have to rig it you can build it without the rigging and it'll look perfectly fine each to their own you know uh, it's your model you're going to display it no one's going to really care but you so do what you think but if you're a glutton for punishment and you've got all that photo etch there waiting to be rigged there's plenty to go at this is not a weekend project this is a big big project a surprisingly big project for what will be a relatively small aircraft right paint instructions so we've got two possibilities of the um, propeller so metal tipped or metal bodied with just a wood uh, center um, I quite like the one with the tips and the and the extra little de decals on I think that'll look good so I think I would go with that um, then you've got this sort of all over green showing you where to put the decals underneath you've got the sort of clear dope color um, and again the the decals and this metal front end here all looks really pretty so yeah very nice um, and then yeah when we turn over so it's just a top and bottom view there so that's basic paint colors and markings then we've got here paint colors and markings again so this is paint scheme a so You've seen the top, a general top and bottom view, and then a paint scheme A, all of this is green. So that's a little confusing because you can see that it's metal there, um, but it's not metal on there, and you don't know whether you're supposed to be leaving the bottom bit metal or not. You know, that could confuse people in, in my view. Um, you can see all where the decals are going. Um, so yeah, it looks quite busy with all the little decals on, doesn't it? And um, yeah. Um, paint colors and everything then paint scheme b and we've got pretty much the same paint scheme other than the struts are painted here rather than left wood quite like them in the wood to be honest i think that looks quite unusual um yeah different color of of um skid at the back but less decals Visually, I think that one's not quite as good looking as that, but this is the Victoria Cross one. So that's the historical one. Then it we're given the impression that we had two paint options on the uh, on the box, but actually we're on paint scheme C here, so we've got more. So this fundamentally looks the same as that. I'm not seeing any differences at all, so it's just a change of decals here. Um, as far as I can see yeah um, and then we've got this one which um, is the one on the box art where we've got different color on the um, wheel hub and we've got more uh, metal work being shown so being shown as silver so would have been aluminium um, so you've got more metal work being shown there so again another interesting scheme some big decal options on there um, you've got an option of red or blue. Um, I, I sort of always go towards red, don't know why. Um, so yeah, um, and that is it. So I actually really quite like that one because of the wooden struts. I think that varnished up and what have you would look really nice. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, food for thought come the time. And then on the back, we've got some more information, more models they do, and so on. Our acetate now, and not much to say really, it's um, printed acetate, but it is fairly scuffed up. Um, let me see, see that in the light. 
it is quite scuffed up and scratched. Probably not going to be noticeable once on. Um, but yeah, it's just been floating around in, in that bag. But yeah, it's a nice addition, nice and thin. and gives you a better scale effect than the plastic part. So um, no issues with that really. Um, and then we've got our main set of decals. And it doesn't look like we've got as many decals as I thought we had from the paint instructions. Um, we've got the national markings, obviously, which are always the same and the, and, and the tail marking there. Um, and then we've got individual uh, dials, which is nice. Um, and we've got uh, the other decals, quite a bit of decal film. Uh, there's not margin or anything like that around um, the, the round holes or anything, um, but quite a bit of decal film uh, around some of these others, but all necessary, I think. Um, yeah, um, it says done uh, printed by Cartograph. Uh, so they should be really nice uh, to lay down. Um, the colours are uh, a little muted and I think that's probably done on purpose because they can be quite vibrant Cartograph decals. And then um, the register is, is absolutely spot on as we'd expect and some very fine detailed decals um, which you know cartograph are experts of so nothing wrong with that really really nice yeah all good then we've got this second little lot of decals which has these are metalized which is why they've been done separately um, those go on the propeller and the other one is like um, a manufacturer's plate to go on the engine lovely Right, photo etch now, and I've got tons of the stuff. And it definitely appears that I've got doubled up because that says fret A. Now, if you look, remember the instructions, we have two fret A's. Um, that says fret A. That says... Uh, nothing particularly. Although it does have a big A on it. <laughs> so... That also says fret A. Oh, and that says fret B. So we seem to have one of the copper ones. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. They're so thin, the copper ones could actually be doubled up and I wouldn't necessarily no but no we've got one of the copper ones we've got two of the fret a's we've got two fret a's there connected together and then we've got two lots of these which are also fret a so i appear to have more photo etch than i should have um i appear to have two lots of everything so but given that those two are connected together in the bag it's it feels like it's been done on purpose give you two pipe bites of the cherry that's very unusual isn't it and do you know what's even weirder this when you look at it is actually this so look there's your uh, front engine cowl front engine cowl um, the, these big side bits here are these here so I do not know what's going on because the instructions show one of those one of those and one of those um, and then I've got another one of those and then what appears to be a brass set of those and that is duplicated as well so I have no understanding as to why I've got so much photo etch something must have gone wrong somewhere I don't know what I mean yeah look that's just been f so maybe there's a right what I, I have I don't know I'm lost but I appear to have a lot more photo etch than the kit thinks the instructions think I should have and I definitely appear to have 
lots of duplication. I mean, seat, seat backs, there's only one seat back required and I've got one, two, three, four of them. <laughs> so um, I may have some spares here. Might be worth buying um, buying another basic version of this because I've got the photo etch for it. Anyway, let's have a look at our photo etch. Copper parts to start with. Um, and I, I seem to have duplications of these in brass as well. You can see there um, and there. So uh, quite why I've got them in copper and brass, I don't know. But I certainly have got duplications. Um, copper obviously is a bit softer. Um, so maybe that's why they've changed it around. don't know. Um, but yeah, it's very nicely done. Very easy to get to the uh, connection nubs and remove them. No issues with that. So what feels like a lot of photo etch when you first open the box actually isn't because there is so much repetition in here. So this one says spare parts. So I can show you that. It says spare parts, fret A spare parts. And it's basically the um, front nose there that you've got to curve that I said would be tricky. Um, and they've given you two frets of spares, so that's four there, plus we've got one there, five, plus we've got one there, six. So we've got six attempts at getting that right, so that's a, a bare minimum, really helpful. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, this, this is a complete duplicate, but you've got some of that on here as well. So you've got four goes at, at, at folding... Um, the seat back, you've got these racks here, so we've got four of those. So, um, and these panels, so you've got all sorts of uh, repetition here. Now, the brass one has some items that um, are not appear to not be on the, the nickel looking ones. Um, so, um, yeah, so. Uh, I think at some point they must have upgraded the set or something like that. Um, but yeah, so for example, this AW, I don't see that we have that on the nickel one, for example. But, you know, you need one of those on each side of the aircraft. I've got four. So I appear to have spares plus more spares. So... Uh, I'm going to start taking some photographs and you can have some nice close-up looks of these um, because I, certainly Photo Etch doesn't like my light so much. So um, this is our first sprue um, and it's oh, A, that's what I was looking for. There's a little tab in the corner there, it says sprue A. Um, and what we've got is our wings, tail, part of the fuselage um, and some other little bits um, looks like the fuel tank. It's all nicely moulded, very, very crisp. Looks really good. We've got nice texturing on the wings. Um, we can see where the um, uh, little ribs are and things like that. So that's all very nice. Um, it's the same on uh, these wing sections as well. Um, and it's the same with the fuselage. We can see nice ribbing there. You can see that under the light. Um, this one's coming adrift a little bit and actually has some damage. So uh, there is uh, dents in the wing top there and there. It's just like something's been dropped on it. There's scuffs on it. I've got a couple of gouges. The miner can be sanded out, but they shouldn't be there. Um, these are solid wings and there's no um, sink or anything like that that I can see. Um, and everything's nice and crisp, no no flash, and there's hardly any seam. So very nice um, moulding all in all. A little bit of seam clean up, uh, I, you know, you can't get away from that. Otherwise, nicely done. There's some nice raised fastened detail on this here, which, it, which sort of looks like it's squashed, but I'm sure it should be like that, I'm hoping. But it sort, sort of looks like it's deformed somehow. You see? 
I think that should be flat, but that stresses the plastic if we do that. We will see when we come to, to fit it. But yeah, uh, fuel tank's got some nice detail on as well. So yeah. So a quick look in the instructions, and yes, this is bent and should actually be perfectly flat. So that's not good. I think we'll be able to sort it out. Um, but yeah, it's straining the part to correct it. So that definitely happened in the mould and nobody quality spotted it. So it's a little disappointing, isn't it? Um, but you do have to remember that Copper State Models is sort of on the larger side of a cottage industry. But um, otherwise, all good. Right, our next sprue out of the box is B and we've got the two fuse large halves the uh, engine halves, propeller, um, we've got the uh, little mounted machine gun there, um, and then we've got all sorts of uh, small parts from seats to the uh, dials there, bits of interior framework, um, bits for the engine, the manifold, this thing that I still don't really know what it is, but I suspect is some form of radiator or air cooling. Um, so all sorts of little bits. The detail on the moulding is absolutely lovely. It's very, very nice indeed. It's a bit, um, some quite heavy um, seam in places. So if you look on that engine, for example, on that um, exhaust, um, quite a bit of seam to remove from that. Um, but I don't see any particular issues. We Again, we've got some parts adrift so it's almost like the man handled a bit before they go in the box. But I don't see that anything's broken and I'm certainly not seeing any issues such as sink at all. The detail on the fuselage is lovely. We've got really nice stitching detail running along the, the, the length of it. Um, got little footholds there nicely depicted so yeah very nice and when we uh, uh, and the texturing as well so you can see this central rib running through there and it all looks like taut material looks really really good so uh, yeah impressed with that I um, think we've got slide moulding there by the looks of it the end of the gun is opened out so that's nice as well. So some really nice thoughtful moulding um, looks really good. And under paint will just look amazing. Okay, sprue C now, and we have um, two of these. Um, so we've got the wheel there. Um, we've got the mounting uh, points for the ordnance. Um, we've got a, a larger machine gun and the ordnance and then the ammunition packs and the struts for the wings. Um, and the first thing that strikes me is the location points for the sprue gates on the struts. They're on the wide edge, so you've got some cleanup to do. Shouldn't be too difficult, but it would have been nice if the connection points of the sprues were on these ends that, that go into the wings. That would have that would have been really nice. That would have mean we've got perfect um, leading edges that don't need cleaning up other, other than a, a seam removal. Um, but as it is, shouldn't be too bad to clean up. Just, you know, nice to have. Um, ordnance looks good. It's all molded in a single piece, no sink. Um, just a bit of clean up on those. And the um, ammunition boxes are really, really nicely done. You know, better level than you get from Airfix, for example. Um, so very nice. The wheel, um, what we've got is um, one half separate hub, um, but it's nicely done. I would say that the spokes behind are a little bit, I mean, firstly, you can see through them. So that's quite an achievement, but they're a bit thick. Um, they're, they're a bit thick. It would have been better for them to have thinned them down and made it solid, I think. Um, because uh, there's no advantage to them having gaps because it's going on to there so you won't see the, the, the gaps so uh, yeah but otherwise the texturing is lovely you can see all the individual spokes on it if we can catch that in the light you'll see in the pictures in a moment um, yeah really nice no issues just um, a little bit of cleanup and away you go 
Now, some of the things that in the instructions tell you to use, um, to use photo etch, there is in the plastic. So these are photo etch parts in the instructions, but they do have plastic ones. Um, and that runs through the same with um, sprue E. So this is our um, front um, nose piece and then the, the um, panels that go over the engine and they're in plastic. So you do have a plastic option as well as all the photo etch. So you can do it any way you like. So if you're not as skilled, if you're new to modeling and, and really want to build this, you shouldn't have too many problems because you've got the plastic components as well. And they are nicely done. Nothing wrong with those at all. So there you have it, the uh, Copper State Models 1 to 48 scale Armstrong Whitworth FK8 mid production version. What's my first impressions? Well, it's clearly a really nice kit, and um, whether intentionally we have all that um, duplication of etch or by accident, it's certainly nice to have it in the box. Um, right, so instructions um, very clear easy to follow um, once you get your head around them and you understand you've got a cross reference um, I don't think there's any major issues they look fairly straightforward in terms of their flow and the rigging diagrams are some of the best you'll see they're better than uh, wing nut wings I think they're really lovely so instructions I have no issues with at all um, paint instructions, you've got to really concentrate on them and be clear what you're doing. But again, um, spending a few minutes studying it and it should all come to light. So again, no real major issues to be honest. Um, plastic parts, well, uh, the, other than a little bit of damage on one of the sprues where they seem to have been slung around a little bit, um, it's all very good, it's all crisp. There's no uh, moulding issues like sink or anything, so all good. And um, yeah, uh, beautifully, uh, beautifully moulded, exquisite detail, nice fine details. There's no skimping in the detail, so I think it will look fabulous. And then we've got um, acetate instead of clear parts, which will give us nice scale effects. And then the photo etch will really raise the game on that and make it look really authentic. The photo etch um, points for the uh, for the bracing wires, for example, you know, um, Airfix have recently released a bulldog and they've put them in in plastic and they look lovely. But having them in photo etch, they look like scale representations. It's a different thing. Um, so yeah, all good from that point of view. Um, packaging good there's nothing here that makes me go I uh, just be careful so um, you know decals they're also cartograph so no issues there everything is really really nicely done so yeah I am massively impressed with the kit 
um, as I have been with all the uh, CSM kits that I've looked at this is another lovely kit and um, I can't wait to build it so at some point we will build this this isn't going to be something that I decide right I'm going to flip this is a lovely kit and um, I'm looking forward to dealing with it at some point when I'm next in the mood for doing some aircraft rigging after having done the Gotha not so long ago earlier this year um, I think I'm uh, a little bit off doing some more rigging but very very nice aircraft and a lovely kit so if you're interested in this you now know what you get in the box I uh, hope you enjoyed that um, in the meantime you enjoy your modeling and I will see you very soon bye for now thanks for watching please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so it's free and that way you won't miss my first impressions my tool reviews my product reviews and any of my builds um, including wooden model kits as well as plastic it's all free and if you'd like to support the channel you can hit my paypal link in the text below uh, every pound goes straight into the channel uh, to keep the cameras rolling and to do more fun stuff for you to watch